Hey everyone, welcome to episode 3 of Cracking the CSWE. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Combined Common Tool, which is a tool that allows you to create one part volume out of two part volumes that share the same space. This can result in some really cool part geometry. And before we get into the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification to be reminded of future episodes. So, with that out of the way, let's get into the video and explain what this Combined Common Tool is all about. The Combined button can be found in the Direct Editing tab. To use it though, we need at least two different bodies in the part file. In the property manager, we would have add, subtract, and common options for the combined feature, and as well a selection box for our bodies. The feature works by taking multiple bodies and either adding, subtracting, or doing a common operation of their volumes relative to each other to make a new body. Before we get into using the combined feature, it'll make more sense to look at a two-dimensional example of what the different combined options, namely add, subtract, and common, will do to a profile. Let's sketch two circles that overlap, looking like a Venn diagram. Then let's go to extrude this. The depth doesn't really matter. We need to take a look at the selected contours. Let's deselect all of the contours that might be selected to look at how the three combined options work. If we were to think of these two circles as two different bodies we want to combine, we can apply the same logic in three dimensions, so that all the combined options make sense. First, we have the Combine Add. This is the simplest. It adds together the volumes, or in this case, the two-dimensional areas of a part together. This would result in all three of the contours being extruded per se. If we were in a 3D space, and each was an extruded cylinder, it would merge into one body with its shape. Next is the Combine Subtract. Instead of adding together the bounded areas of the different parts, this subtracts them so that any overlapping areas or volumes are not used. This results in the contours only being preserved being the outside ones, as the inside contour is shared by both of the circles. The only difference when using the combined feature is that you would need to select a main body which other bodies subtract from. So in the 3D example with our extruded cylinders, we would end up with two bodies in the shape of the outside profiles and we'd effectively need to select one to keep as our main body. Lastly, and most commonly found for the exam, is the combined common. This takes two different geometry and finds the shared, or common volume, of both parts and produces geometry from that. In our 2D sketch example, this would result in the center contour being made, and in a 3D example, it would result in a part stemming from the shared area of the two cylinders, which would have a profile looking like this. When we think of the different types of combined common questions you'll need to know, either we will be given the drawings for the parts and then we'll be expected to combine to join them and eventually get a mass, or we're going to be given a drawing of one part that we are expected to make with the combined features. In this case, we usually would get a few views of the part, such as the front view or side view, so we know what to base our part on. I'll run through these two examples here, but it'll be more of a theoretical approach. I know I mention this in every video, but a practice exam will be at the end of the series, so be sure to stay tuned for when I post that. First, let's make a combined common part using two different part bodies. We can make the bodies in the same part, making sure to deselect the merge entities option. Let's say the first shape we need is a simple block with two holes running through it. We can do this all in one sketch and then extrude it to get our block. Next, let's say we want on the side of it a Z-shaped body. We can sketch this using the shape of the Z and then offsetting as necessary to get our next sketch. Remember to extrude it with merge entities turned off. Now we can go to our Direct Editing tab and select Combine. Then we can select Combine Common, select our bodies, and get our final part. We can see the holes of the first body are incorporated into the second body. If you've been using SolidWorks for a while now, you might be thinking, why should I do this if I could simply make two holes with an extruded cut? While I might agree on this in this example, the Combine Common is more useful for when joining bodies of more than one feature when used in real workflows, so knowing the existence of the feature is useful for when the need arises for you. 
Next, let's think about the combined common to make a part with two specific views in mind. Let's say we want a part to look like an S from one view and then an L from another view, perpendicular to the previous one. We can use the same method as the previous part and make two bodies with the profiles we want. We can start a sketch on this plane and then draw a line which our S will sit on. We can use the text tool, select our line for the curve, and then type a capital S. We can do the same thing on the plane beside this one with the L. We can then extrude the two sketches so that they are interfering with each other, so that a combined common can work, and much like in the last example, we'll use the combined common feature to finish our part. You'll see from this view the part looks like an S, while on this perpendicular view it looks like an L. That concludes what you need to know about the combined common feature for the CSWE exam. Like I said previously, if you want to practice this, stay tuned till the end of the series where I'll post a full CSWE practice exam. Thank you so much for watching episode 3 of Cracking the CSWE. I hope you have a better understanding of the combined common tool and how you can use it. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at CAM motions and the CAM relation in general. I know we covered this a little bit in the Zero to CSWP series, but in the next video, we're gonna be going a little bit deeper and seeing how you're gonna to need to use it in the CSWE exam. So I'll see you in that video.